Hey everyone, Eric Freeman, and I want to introduce a film from 1978. It's written by uh, Walter Hill, directed by Walter Hill. It's called The Driver. Now this is a film right after the movie Hard Times, which uh, Walter Hill directed and uh, wrote. And uh, this movie is about a getaway driver. And uh, the idea came to Walter Hill because his producer, Lawrence Gordon, when they were on the film of Hard Times, Lawrence Gordon said, I'd like to see a film about a getaway driver. And uh, Walter Hill thought that was a good idea, so he started writing it nearly immediately while he was on the set of Hard Times, directing it. And, um, and he continued to write it after the movie wrapped. And what he found, though, it was very difficult to get a lead for this movie, uh, this film. They had their eyes set on Steve McQueen, but Steve McQueen just turned him down flat because he already did two car movies, and I just didn't want to do another one. Now, they searched and searched, and now this took about a year and a half, and they couldn't get any of the major leads in Hollywood to want to do this for some reason or another. So... The studio said, look, you need to get a lead, someone bankable, because we're not going to finance this movie unless it's, you know, a movie star. So um, I don't know how it came to be, but uh, an agent had heard of this uh, script being shopped around, and he had called Walter Hill saying, um, my client, Ryan O'Neill, would like to meet with you because he'd like to do this movie. And so Walter Hill met with Ryan O'Neill, and they had a long discussion, and uh, Ryan O'Neill really was pushing and said, I'd like to do this movie, and Walter Hill liked him. They got along, and uh, the studio got wind of uh, Ryan O'Neill wanting to do this, and so they bankrolled it. And uh, so that that's how the movie was made. Uh, problem is with this movie, back in the day when it was released, uh, it had terrible reviews, just terrible. Uh, Walter Hill went on to say, that uh, he had six inches of uh, reviews. He said, I had a stack so thick you could stop a 45 bullet with it, and there was only one good review in the whole stack. And uh, Hill went on to say that, um, that the movie only made money in Japan, and, and the reason for that was the reviews were all the same. They were all about there was no character development that uh, we didn't know, you know, the favorite color of each character or if their mommy or daddy liked them or not or all this because this film doesn't have any of that. Very little character development. It just has uh, really good acting and a lot of action scenes and it's just well written. It just, we don't know a lot about the lead. We, the uh, second lead in this is Isabella Johnny and uh, French actress, first Amer American film, and um, she does a great job. It's written for her to be, uh, to have a poker face, to, to not say much. She's the perfect antidote to Caldwell. I mean, she is absolutely, you know, quiet and uh, great demeanor. Uh, but anyhow, get past that. Uh, this is a, a good film, and it's about a getaway driver, naturally, and that's Ryan O'Neill, and uh, he's known as the Cowboy, and there really isn't any character that has a name in this movie other than what Bruce Dern calls them. Bruce Dern is known as the Detective, and um, Ryan O'Neill is known as the Cowboy, and uh, Isabella Johnny is the Player, and then we have uh, other characters in this movie. One is glasses, one's teeth, um, one's the connection. Uh, so we really don't know their names, just what they are in this, in this film. And uh, the person that has all the dialogue in this film is uh, Bruce Dern. And he's, he's good. He's always good. He plays a very slimy, weaselly kind of guy. Perfect for Bruce Dern. Perfect. Um, in fact, the backstory on casting him is he wasn't the first choice. Um, they wanted Robert Mitchum, big time movie star in the 40s and 50s and 60s, even up into the 70s. I mean, as big as big could be, Robert Mitchum. And they offered it to Mitchum. He turned it down flat. 
And uh, Walter Hill found Bruce Dern, and Bruce Dern wanted it, and that's the way that was. So there was a lot of casting trouble in this movie, but all for the best. Sometimes you get, you know, your second grade players in this, and they do a great job. So um, this movie, by the way, and you might know of, uh, of it in 2011 called Drive. Now, Drive uh, starred Ryan Gosling, and a uh, damn good movie. Anyone that's seen it would agree. But I would say this about that movie. That soundtrack sucked. That It, it, it blew chunks, and there was no way around it. In fact, I, when I was watching that movie, I said, who did this soundtrack? Because it is horrible. And uh, But we, have, we don't have that here. In this smaller film from 1978, it's got a good soundtrack. It's got a lot of action, got a lot of car chases. Um, a lot of hopped up cars, a lot of cool uh, L.A. scenery from 1978. And, uh, you know, the roads seem to be slicked on a lot, like you'd seen a Michael Mann film. And, and a Ryan O'Neill, you know, is as handsome, as cool a as you could be. And um, it's a good movie. You know, I don't care what the reviews said back then, because... The reviews from today about that movie are, they all call it a Neil Noor classic, a cult classic, and everyone loves this movie now. But back then, I think that Walter Hill was probably ahead of his time. He didn't, you know, get into heavy character development on everyone. He just, you know, action, minimal dialogue, let Bruce Dern handle it as far as the dialogue to keep that balance. But overall... This is a good film. I would search it out. And uh, I know Justin's just going to knock this one out of the park. He hasn't seen it. But he's seen it now. I mean, now, if he's going to be on, if I'm on his channel, he's seen it. And I know he's going to like it. So uh, if you have seen it, revisit this movie. And if you haven't, you're going to, it's a treat. It's a good film. You know, it's not. It doesn't have the action of Drive from 2011, and you wouldn't expect it to, but I think overall it's a good film, and uh, it, it needs to be uh, looked at. And I want to thank you, and I want to thank Justin. And uh, so, you know, he's given me three cracks at this, and I, hopefully I haven't let him down, not yet. But, uh, you know, I'll wait for that day. He'll give me the hook, and uh, but until then... Um, thank you for uh, entertaining me all this, uh, what, four or five minutes? I don't know. But uh, watch his film. That's The Driver, 1978, Walter Hill. I'm sure I missed something in this. But overall, um, good, good film. And uh, give it a look. Thank you. Take care. Adios. Hey, what's up? People Piz Al here, and as Eric mentioned in his introduction, today we are talking about 1978's The Driver. Ryan O'Neill plays a slick professional getaway driver who's the best at what he does. Bruce Dern is a tenacious cop out to bust him who's not afraid to twist the rules. Isabella Ajani is an eyewitness who can finger the driver, but doesn't. Cops, crooks, a beautiful dame, millions of dollars on the line, and everybody has a target on their back. Buckle up. This is going to be a bumpy ride. Walter Hill's The Driver is a straightforward, fast-paced, gritty neo-noir that doesn't throttle its horsepower with needless subplots or character development. As Eric mentioned in his intro, Mr. Hill drew flack from critics upon the film's release for the lack of character depth. But The Driver is about characters who occupy the fringes of society, people with assumed names and falsified credentials, where the cops are just as crooked as the thieves, and loyalty... Ha! Loyalty is bought and sold, and backs are for stabbing. These are the kinds of characters that the less you know about them, the more dangerous and mysterious they are. If you've heard of The Driver, it's probably because of the awesome car chase sequences in the film. They're not flashy or cut a million ways from Sunday and edited together like a music video to the din of some awful music. The car chase sequences in The Driver are choreographed and filmed beautifully, accompanied only by the sounds of roaring engines and squealing tires, giving the sequences attention and brutality that the Fast and the Furious movies can't begin to touch. Ryan O'Neill delivers a steely and subtly menacing performance as The Driver. 
With very little dialogue, O'Neill is able to communicate plenty through a vocabulary of actions, and as we all know, actions speak louder than words. Bruce Dern is great as the detective, a cocky lawman who, much like the criminals he pursues, occupies his own kind of underworld in which he calls the shots. Isabella Ajani is mysterious and sexy as the connection, the kind of woman you can't take your eyes off of, and not just because she's a stunner. Walter Hill supplies a very steady hand behind the camera, and The Driver is a beautifully gritty looking film thanks to cinematographer Philip Lathrop, who also shot 1967's Point Blank with Lee Marvin, which was the subject of our first Forgotten Films with Eric Freeman review. If you're in the mood for a straightforward, anything but simple, dare I say meditative, neo-noir experience, catch a ride with The Driver, but hold on tight. Shout out to the great Eric Freeman who recommended that we review The Driver for this installment of Forgotten Films with Eric Freeman. If you'd like to request a movie for me to review and introduce that movie prior to my review, follow the link in the description or head over to patreon.com forward slash pizal and become a collaborator today. If you've seen The Driver, please let me know your thoughts on the film down in the comments section below. Let me know what your favorite neo-noir film is down in the comments section below also. If you like this video, please leave it a thumbs up and share it on social media. If you're not following me on social media, those links are in the description. Also go check out Eric Freeman's website over at theeericfreeman.com. That's theeericfreeman.com. Thanks so much for watching. I really appreciate it. Take care and until next time, peace. A big thank you to all my awesome Patreon supporters. I appreciate your generosity and support of my channel. Become a patron today and join me for monthly live streams and have a say in what movies I review on my channel. Patreon.com forward slash Pizal or follow the link in the description. Say hello to the internet, Jeremy. Hello to the internet.